data binding one of the most important features of a framework or Aurilla JS framework is the ability to provide some form of data binding and Aurilla has a wonderful and mature implementation. We will first look at the core components of the data binding and then we'll start with the real world scenarios that is developing an application in Aurilla JS. So let's start with it. For whatever the binding activities we have it over here. The first one is like the bind activity and after that we have one way, two way, one time, string interpolation, loops and so on. So binding is nothing but to bind particular value in your HTML syntax. One way is nothing but there are times when we just want our pages to reflect what is stored in a view model structure. In such a scenario, we always focus on one way step. Two-way means likewise if you want the ability to binding receive updates from the view model constraint. Then you enter the two-way concept. One time, there are many times when you bind a value to a screen and you, uh, it's like you let you know the value will never change in the view model constraint. In such a scenario, it is called as the one-time constraint. After that, we have string interpolation. We just saw how to do one-way binding, but you will have to find a lot of scenarios when you want to provide both content and binding structure, then we have loops. Binding to properties is great, but it really doesn't help when you need to loop over a collection of a data. For such a scenario, you always have keep to have something which is of a great solution, which is called as loops. So let's go to our code base where we will have the look on the example of each one of them. That is bind, one way, two way, one time, string interpolation and loops. So let's start with it and here binding is completely done with our HTML file. So I'll create an HTML file as new file inside my project. I will save it as demo.html inside my particular project. So it will be saved as demo.html. Here we will have the basic examples which are needed for binding a particular value in Aurilla JS or basically data binding. Starting with the first one that is bind. In Aurilla, it is possible to bind practically any attribute with few exceptions. You can achieve this by using up a markup which is related to bind. For that, we just have to say, give a HTML syntax with a particular value like input and the value will be value.bind. So this was my first binding constraint equal to first name. Okay, so this was my, I'll just mention in the comment part. So this was the first data binding step that is using bind. So this is using bind. Okay, after this, the next constraint comes is like, you have to understand about one way, but prior to that, We'll also understand that here, whenever we call for binding, so binding is typically one way because if you want the element attribute, it's like you're binding your value of the element with first name. So it is like you're connecting the value with respect to first name. That is why it is using an attribute value that is bind. Here we see that example of a binding attribute is done with respect to input element, but we can also have it with li elements tag or form tag or any other tag which you want it. So basically binding is quite simple when it comes to just mentioning a particular attribute name. After that we have one way. There are times when we just want our pages to reflect that is when it is sorted in our view model structure. This is exactly one way does for us. A simple example for one way would be in this format. So let's have a look on what is one way. So for one way, I'll just mention the comment here that this is the example for one way. And after that, I'll say li. This is a li tag. So li tag is a part of the ul tag, which is like listing of the particular elements in HTML5. So here li will have value content. And it will specify one way attribute in this particular format like content dot one way like the way we did for bind so same way we'll do it here one hyphen way and the value associated to it would be name okay 
So this is a one way attribute. So in this example, we are setting the content attribute of the ally to be bound to the name property of our view model. Whenever our name property changes, the ally will be updated accordingly. After this comes the two way property. Likewise, if we want to able to provide the ability for binding to receive updates from the view model as well as send updates from the view, we would need to create a binding which is like a two-way property. For two-way, the property would be in this particular format. Let's have a look on it. So I'll just create an example for two-way as li. Before that, I'd like to mention the comment two-way. Here I'll take the input tag, the way, the way we did for uh, the bind value, the similar thing we will do it over here. And here I'll take input and the value will be value dot two way, which takes a property of search. Okay, so this is my two way example. So what it does, in this example, we are specifying that we want our value property of the element to have two-way data binding so that changes in the view model space basically when it comes to view and the view model are reflected properly. Remember that if you are binding input and select elements inside from tag, you will get two-way data binding automatically. So this was for bind element one-way and two-way. Basically, I would like to repeat again. Binding is typically one way type of a structure, but if your element are inside the form tag, then binding will be actually two way by default. Now you have basically understood the binding for bind one way and two way. Let's move on to the next that is one time. So for one time, there are like sometimes it happens that when you want to bind a value to a screen and you know that the value will never change in the view model structure. You can notify Aurilla that you it does not need to observe the changes that is underlying property on the view model and simply request it to render the initial value when the screen is loaded. If you change the value of the view model at later time, the view will not receive this update automatically. So let's have a look with the example for one time. For that, I'll take a comment over here that this is a one time binding element. It will take a span element. So my span will have content, content dot one time, one hyphen time equals message. Okay. And then we have the string interpolation. So for, so this example will basically tell you that you can notify Aurilla that it does not need to observe the underlying changes with the span element. You just have to take this property once. So that is why it is mentioning one time. After this comes the string interpolation property. We just saw how to do one, one way kind of binding, but you will find a lot of scenarios when you want to provide both content and binding. This is where string interpolation comes into picture. The nice thing about this feature is that it exactly same as that of the ES6 specification. So you are not learning something new from the API perspective when it comes to Aurilla JS. Consider for the example for string interpolation like the basic thing inside the span element. We also saw this in our previous example, like mentioning dollar and curly braces and the variable associated to it. So that is a best example for string interpolation. So let's have a look of having it here. I'll specify the comment as string interpolation and after that I'll take it as an example inside it would be span and I'm taking hello with dollar and two curly braces and the variable name is say for example name the way we found over here. So it will call for variable name that is associated to name inside this string and it will concatenate the value. Say for example, if the variable name is Radhika, so it will concatenate it over here and it will print a value like hello Radhika. So that is a basic example for string interpolation, which is usually observed in ES6, which is followed over here. After this comes loops. So we had a look about bind one way, two way, one time and string interpolation. Let's have a look about loops. Binding the properties is great, 
but it really but it really doesn't help when you need to loop over a collection of a data aurela has a great solution for this it uses repeat for syntax consider for an example so repeat for syntax is the looping structure which it does for looping a particular value for that the basic syntax for repeat for is the same way like we had seen in our previous examples or something so it just says so i just take a comment over here repeat for or that is nothing but the looping scenario so inside repeat for what it does it takes li and it says repeat repeat dot for it does in this format and it gives the variable name associated to it say for example my variable name is say row so i will say row of router router dot navigation this is just a demo example inside this li repeat it will print whatever we want it so that is the repeat for syntax all about so aurela has a great solution for this is like repeat for which helps you to loop over the collection of a data here we loop over the navigation array property of the router object and we can interpret this syntax as we need it if you want a reference of something you can use repeat property in some other uh, html tags next come is the reference binding sometimes you want to just bind the property on an uh, another element aurela makes this extremely easy with the help of reference keyword so basic example for reference i'll just show you over here so this would be my example for reference binding okay so here it will say say i am calling for some particular template we saw some kind of example in our last chapter after that i'll say h1 and it will take a value say with string interpolation property of title after that it will take other tag which is like input element so here i'll say input and after input i'll specify reference keyword so i'll say reference and the customer name customer name okay and after this it will call for h2 tag which says h2 and inside this it will specify hello dollar it will take a value customer name dot value okay and here it will concatenate the string like how can i help you so what happens in this scenario is like it takes the value which is the customer name okay which is the reference and whatever you print over here inside the input tag will be printed over here automatically so whenever you run the output we see that we are referencing the input element and accessing the value property so that we can display the value in the span element not only we can have the ability to reference for any such kind of element that as reference attribute but also as the reference attribute with respect to view model concept also like suppose you have it like someone is inputting his customer name or student name or something but simultaneously you can see it like the customer name is printed inside the h2 tag so that is quite fascinating which is like some kind of a property which is present in angular js as well so that kinds of property is like followed over here where you just print the value whatever it is visible in the input box automatically it is being printed in my h2 tag so that is the property which is oftenly followed so this was a kind of a best example which i can say is like for reference binding there are also various type of the binding which comes into picture for example say form binding say for example say input binding check box binding so where it takes the bind attribute into a picture where you just have to put the attribute functionality and that particular value will be binded inside that attribute this was in case for input binding check box binding radio button binding select binding and select binding also takes repeat for attribute for repeating the number of options inside the select box 
So these kind of bindings can be computed and be implemented as and when it is needed. So moving on in our next chapter, we'll focus about the custom elements and later we'll have the look about various type of the data binding behavior.